All right, at 10.01, we're going to, Pacific time, we're going to go ahead and get started. Hi, everybody. I'm Ross Trelevin. I'm Executive Vice President of Sprague Pest Solutions, and welcome to our next webinar in our summer-long series. Today's webinar is entitled No Prep Bed Bug Solutions. We miss seeing everyone in person this year, but I'm pleased that you're joining us virtually today. Uh, today's presenters are Danny White and AJ Trelevin. Danny uh, serves as a sought-after bed bug treatment consultant and account, management, account manager for Bed Bug Central. White is specialized in the complex issues surrounding the, uh, the uh, bed bug removal and treatments on office structures, commercial facilities uh, for the past 11 years. In addition to his consultations and speaking events, he also serves as an instructor for Bed Bug University's boot camp, where he educates visiting pest management firms from across the country and, in, uh, and internationally on all the considerations that need to be taken into an account. Uh, to successfully treat for bed bugs along with uh, differentiating your service versus the competition. AJ Tree 11 is a regional manager at Sprague Pest Solutions in charge of, our, of our, many of our dense and urban markets, including Seattle, Las Vegas, and Salt Lake City. His career here includes time as a technician and sales and branch manager and serves on the board of directors for our National Pest Management Association. Uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to uh, Danny here, who's going to lead us through the first half of the presentation. And of course, click down below on the question or the Q&A box there and submit your questions while we're talking. And at the end, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and do a Q&A. Thank you, Ross. Danny, take it away. Thank you very much. So basically, like I said, Ross, I want to just introduce myself. I'm coming to you live from Philadelphia in my wonderful kitchen. Um, so what I want to do is kind of give you a background of where I come from, from a pest control side of things. So I've been in the industry, as Ross said, for about 11 years. And the first seven, I was actually directly correlated with a pest control company out of New Jersey. And basically, I was the bed bug account manager. And what that truly means is I managed all the commercial accounts, like apartment buildings, office space, but, uh, hospitals. So I managed pretty, anything that came through the doors at Cooper Pest Solutions, I was heavily involved with when it came to bed bugs. Um, on top of that, I did some residential work, but it kind of gives you a background on where I come from the industry, kind of where all my expertise comes from. And now basically travel the country and talk to both pest control providers along with affected industries like we have on the phone call today. So that's a little bit of background on who I am. Um, as you see on the first slide is there's my email address. If you have any follow-up questions, after the presentation, don't hesitate to reach out to me directly. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you may have because it's just because you don't have the questions during the presentation. When you start to digest the information later in the day or overnight, tomorrow morning you wake up, you have a question, just shoot me an email. That's what I'm here for is to support any questions you may have. So the plan for today, I know two weeks ago, if you were on the presentation with Jeff, who is my brother, uh, he talked about kind of like the bed bugs 101, the behavior, biology, and information like that. My presentation is going to be a little bit different, is I want to talk about it from a property management perspective and different things you can put in place in order to detect problems early. And let's be honest, ultimately save money in the long term is bed bugs are an expensive bug. And being able to detect problems early and finding out you have an issue before it becomes a bigger issue is very important. So I'm gonna start with identifying an infestation. Obviously the importance of early detection, why early detection is so very important. We'll talk about detection options that you have to choose from, like what detection options are out there, whether it's visual, canine, monitors, all that good stuff. We'll talk about inspections and monitoring and then surrounding unit inspections. Then we'll talk about the no prep refresher. Jeff spoke about that on presentation two weeks ago, but I'm gonna use it as a refresher because when I speak, Towards the end of my presentation, I'm going to talk about the community-wide program, and that really takes into account the no prep bed bug philosophy, treatment philosophy that we spoke about in class one. So I want to make sure you have a quick refresher on that. And lastly, before I turn it over to AJ, is I'm going to talk about a success story with a pest control provider and an affordable housing agency out of northeastern Pennsylvania that had a pretty significant issue but they were very aggressive with it and they actually were able to reduce the numbers drastically over a two year period. And I'm gonna break that down just for some success stories outside of me talking about it and hearing success stories outside of it is actually very important. So let's start with identifying an infestation. Obviously you can't have a treatment program in place until you know there is an infestation in an apartment, in an office space or in a single family home. So. Early detection is by far the most critical thing when we speak about bed bug control is the more complex the problem is, 
it becomes very difficult and costly to eliminate. And what I mean by that is if it's one to five bugs in an apartment, from a pest control side of things, it's a lot easier to treat and eliminate five bugs versus, versus treating a thousand bugs. And it's just, yes, from a pest control side of things, that's important, but think about it from a budgetary perspective. A low level infestation of five bugs is also less expensive than a, very, than a high level, and you're not dealing with as many visits. And when I talk about visits, a high level may take five, six, seven, eight visits. You're inconveniencing that resident over that two month period. So obviously the importance of early detection and not stressing the tenants out and being able to eliminate it in a very timely fashion. And when you have a high level bed bug infestation, it's more likely to spread. And that's where surrounding units and common areas come into play. I'm going to talk about surrounding units in probably five to 10 slides, but common areas are also a concern as well, especially in apartment buildings, because a lot of these communities, the residents are friendly with each other and they meet in the common waiting area, or there's a common area where they give presentations and you have to be concerned about those areas when you're dealing with high level infestations. And I think one of the biggest takeaways from this presentation that I'm going to give is how important early detection is and making sure that you are creating some kind of proactive monitoring in order to detect these problems. So detection options. Resident interviews is obviously one. Visual inspections is having a, either a pest control provider or training your maintenance staff on how to do bed bug inspections. Obviously bed bugs are called bed bugs for a reason or associated with sleeping areas. So training the maintenance staff on how to do a proper bed bug inspection or having pest control provider come out and do that. Uh, canine scent detection. Basically canine scent is another option you have and basically it's exactly what the name states. It's, the, the canine is trained on the scent of bed bugs like a drug sniff, like a bomb sniffing or drug sniffing dog is. And what happens is the handler brings the dog into the apartment. They do a full inspection of the apartment. If the canine picks up a scent, of bed bugs, it'll either sit and scratch, which indicates to the handler that they believe a bed bug is there from the scent, and then the handler does a visual inspection to verify what they found. And lastly, monitors and traps, more importantly, pitfall traps, both passive monitors and active monitors. And we're gonna talk about each of these. So why do we inspect? Why do we monitor a situation? Obviously, you wanna detect a new problem. Is doing an inspection, having a pest control provider come out, and do an inspection of a unit is obviously to detect a new problem. If you decide to go building wide inspections is really truly to detect the low levels. To assess the extent of a problem is being able to maybe place monitors underneath the bed legs or randomly placing monitors throughout the environment to understand how established an infestation is throughout the apartment or the surrounding unit apartments. To evaluate the effectiveness of controls, I know from interfacing with hundreds of pest control companies. Some people install monitors and when the problem, they believe the problem's gone, they'll install more monitors to evaluate the effectiveness of control efforts, which tells them, okay, we got rid of the problem, which also tells the property management company the same thing. And to help to determine when the problem has been 100% eradicated. And like I said, is a lot of times people put monitors out and leave them behind after the treatment, just because it gives the resident peace of mind and if the resident reduces the amount of stress, knowing that the monitors will detect the, detect, the, detect, the, detect the problem, is they'll sleep better at night. They're not gonna call the property management and complain of random things. They know these monitors are there for a purpose in order to detect that bed bugs are there. So let's talk about some research. Is me talking about the different inspection methods doesn't draw the picture. So some research was done over 346 infested apartments. They knew that they were infested. Only 26% of those infested apartments, the resident reported. So it really stresses is yes, resident interviews are important, but at the same time, they're not very effective because only 26% of residents reported the 346 apartments. But what the property also did is they also did a proactive inspection. This was a visual inspection of all 346 apartments and they were able to detect 74% of those 346 with just a basic visual inspection. So 
we estimate a visual inspection is anywhere between 50 and 75 percent reliable so that's why i always say is if you have a pest management company handy you can have them come out and do the inspections or the pest management company that you're working with can train the maintenance staff how to do bed bug inspections as well so basically whenever they go in to fix a leaky pipe or repair a hole in the wall they can easily do a visual inspection and add it to the checklist of making sure that there are no bed bugs in a specific apartment that they're in. It's just some ideas in order to help save money in the long run and what can be done, maybe partnering with your pest control company and creating a good relationship on working together. So it goes back to why did only 26% of the residents report? And let's be honest is the reason they're not reporting is they have the nothing ever changes attitude where if there's a property that has a significant bed bug issue, they sit back and say, well, management's not doing anything about it. So why am I even going to report it? Hopefully that's none of your properties, but they definitely are out there. Uh, fear of negative repercussions is their fear is if they report it to property manager management, are they going to be responsible for the pest control remedy? Are they going to have to pay for it? And negative repercussions from their neighbors and friends like, oh no, they have bed bugs. I'm not going to go over their apartment, so on and so forth and trying to avoid attention from management. These apartments are their homes. And I know my house, I don't want random people in my home. Well, they're, it's the same way with their apartments. They don't want management in their house. They don't want pest control providers in their house. So trying to avoid attention. And last, but I think the most reasonable one is they're ashamed or embarrassed is, unfortunately the misconception with bed bugs is only dirty people get bed bugs. And we know this being on this webinar, giving this webinar, we know that's not true. Anybody can get bed bugs. They don't care if you're rich, poor, middle class. If you have blood, they could potentially be in your home. So ashamed or embarrassed, I wish we could get away with, get away from that, but unfortunately it's here to stay. And unaware about bed bugs is they're small. They're, just, they're a very small pest. They're about the size of an uh, apple seed. And some people can't see them or they're not reacting to bites. That opens up a big can of worms because not everybody reacts the same when it comes to bed bug bites. I know from being fed on by a bed bug, it takes me 11 days to react to a bed bug bite. Whereas my brother, he'll react immediately and everybody reacts a little bit differently and some don't react at all. And then mental, mentally dis, mental disabilities, if they can't report, maybe they're non, they can't communicate that they have an issue. And that's just something you need to consider. And how you overcome something like this is I think it's important is to do education sessions with your, with your residents. I know a lot of times you make it optional and only five people show up, but at least offer the education so they can be aware of what a problem looks like. They don't need to be ashamed or embarrassed if they have an issue. Is having open forums. And even if five people show up, those five people have friends throughout that community that they're gonna talk about this great bed bug training that went on and make sure that they communicate the information that was communicated at the trading event. And that's kind of how you can start to overcome these hurdles and making sure the residents report an issue because we need the residents to report an issue. But like I said, that you can't count on it. And once again, another research that was done, and this really outlines the resident interview versus visual inspection versus pitfall traps, which we're going to get to is 71 infested apartments, Mixed infestations, anywhere from very low level infestations to very severe. They interviewed all 71 apartments, residents, and only 20, and only 30% reported they had an issue. Then the pest control provider did a visual inspection, only detected 49%, which is six or 49, which is 69%. And then they also installed pitfall traps. And they were able to detect 96 of all the infestation with under the bed interceptors. And like I said, we'll kind of break that down in the upcoming slides of what a pitfall trap really truly means. But it just breaks down how effective each level is from a resident interview to a visual inspection to a pitfall trap. So it kind of elaborates that. So let's talk about pitfall traps. I've said it a few times. Let's give you a little quick overview on what we mean by that. Basically, they're exactly what the name states is the picture on the left, the round one, what that's going to do is that's going to go directly underneath the bed leg. You're going to put the bed leg in the inner well. As the bugs come to the bed to feed, they climb up this outer wall and they fall in. And this outer well is too slick for the bed bugs to grasp onto it. And the steepness of the walls, they can't climb out of it. So it becomes a trap. 
Um, and that's basically the under the bed interceptors. Then you have the picture on the right, which is the volcano interceptor. And it's the same concept is bed bugs. It doesn't go underneath the bed legs. It's considered a standalone interception device. It doesn't go underneath the bed legs, but it can be placed randomly throughout an apartment, common area, uh, waiting room. And you can actually put an active packet in there that mimics the scent of skin and draws bugs to it. So it makes that passive monitor an active monitor. And it doesn't need to be cleaned. Whereas the under the bed interceptor, the blackout, needs to be cleaned once every two to four weeks because once dust collects in it, bugs can climb through it where the volcano is maintenance free. So you can install it and not have to worry about it for months because you know the dust can't collect in it. So that's just a quick overview of what, when I say pitfall traps, what I truly mean. So this was research done over 116 units is we've basically visually inspected all 116 units and we only detected with our eyes 746 bugs. We at that point put in interception devices, the under the bed, the under the bed interceptors, the blackout, went back out two weeks later, and we caught over 1,600 bugs in these devices alone. And that tells me that the bugs were coming to the bed to feed, but were unable to because these devices captured them before they got to the blood source. So it stresses the early detection where you can install these devices complex wide at a nominal cost and you're going to detect a significant amount uh, you're going to potentially detect a significant amount of apartments that have an issue and the take home for the 600 1619 bugs 1300 of those were in the outer well where 291 were in the inner well and what that tells me is the bugs were in the bed and they were coming out of the bed to go to the hard to address areas maybe go to a different bedroom a surrounding unit or some area outside of the bedding area, but intercept them as they made their travels. So it can be to and from the bed. And it's important to understand the effectiveness of them. And if you were to decide to go this route is make sure that the residents understand why they're there. Because if they don't, unfortunately, they're gonna use them as an ashtray, a pistachio nut holder, whatever it may be. So you wanna make sure they understand why they're there, how effective they are, and then it gives them perception of, oh, wow, these devices are going to capture bugs that I may not be able to see. So it's just another tool to increase awareness. And also in 77 apartments that had a very low level bed bug infestation, a visual inspection only detected 52%, whereas the interceptors detected 92% of all 77. And once again, just to back some of the research of how important something as easy as a dog bowl can be and how effective it is and how it important it is when it comes to early detection. So there's just a few images of how they're used. If you decide to go the blackout or the under the bed interceptor, obviously they go underneath the bed legs. If you decide to go the volcano route, you want to put them next to the bed legs. And believe it or not, even though they're not associated to the bed legs themselves, they're still going to capture bugs. So you want to make sure if you decide to still use them, even if they don't have bed legs or you decide to go the volcano route. But the real take home for under the leg interceptors versus the next to the leg, when do you decide to use what product? So the under the bed interceptor will detect 95% of all infestation within two weeks. We look at them as good as a, as a treatment program, but the issue with them is, is two, twofold. Is first the dust collection, if you have your apartment building, you know that it's never going to be cleaned. It may be better up alternative to go to standalone. But if they're going to be cleaned more readily, they're a more effective product, the under the leg interceptors. Now, what about the standalone, the next to the leg? They will detect 80% within four weeks. So they're a little bit less effective, but they'll take a little bit more time, but they're less time consuming. You don't have to worry about cleaning them out. If your maintenance staff decides to start inspecting those as part of their checkoff list, they can easily get these devices from behind the bed versus having to pick up the whole bed, take them out. And it's good for a part as a proactive program is creating a monitoring cycle on, okay, over the year, I'm going to inspect every apartment twice and we're going to install monitors in order to help do that. And just a more of a proactive program. So there's the background of the monitors and the importance of them when it comes to early detection. So let's talk movement. So this was a study done by Rick Cooper out of New Jersey. Is this, the take home for this is the movement and how readily bed bugs move. And this is gonna sound dark, but it was told the pest control industry a lot of information and also affected industries. So 
Rick Cooper went into a six apartments that had a very severe infestation. This apartment complex had, they were out of control. And what he did is he went and he collected bugs. He brought, he brought them back to the lab. He painted them different colors and brought them back to the environment and re-released them. And keep in mind, this was research. This was important for both affected industries and pest management industry is he wanted to go back 24 hours later after re-releasing them and also two weeks later to see how readily bed bugs move throughout this, these apartments. So he released, say, red bugs the head of the bed, yellow bugs the foot of the bed, green bugs in the living room, white bugs in the bathroom. He followed up 24 hours, and there were already bed bugs moving throughout the apartment. And if you're the yellow bed bugs that were released to the head of the bed, there was somebody actively sleeping in this bed. So why would a bed bug leave if the blood source is there? And believe it or not, within 24 hours, there were actually yellow bugs found in the living room and the bathroom. And it was eye-opening because we knew, we, why would a bed bug ever move within 24 hours if there was a blood source there? And this is important when you're talking about your apartment buildings because you wanna make sure to inspect all rooms and also the importance of inspecting surrounding units because within 14 days, there were different color bugs throughout the entire apartment. And more importantly, look at the green bug. They were released in the living room, but there was actually a green bug in the apartment hallway. So it once again leads me to my next point is the importance of surrounding unit movement is if you're currently working with a pest control provider that isn't, if they have, if they're treating an infested apartment and they're not inspecting the surrounding units, you want to talk to them about doing that because just if a resident reports a lot of the time, the person reporting isn't the actual problem. It is a potentially surrounding unit that shares an adjacent wall, left, right, and across the hall. So you want to make sure the pest control provider that you're working with when they're, in, when they're treating an apartment to also do surrounding unit inspections to make sure to find that smoking gun, if there is that smoking gun. And if there isn't, great. But then again, you may uncover a problem that's scattered throughout the apartment complex and maybe finding the source of all the of all the infestations. So once again, if your pest control provider isn't currently doing surrounding unit inspections, you want to make sure to talk to them and add that to the apartment to the infested apartment program. Surrounding unit inspections, it could just be a quick visual inspection. It doesn't need to have to be it doesn't have to be extensive. These surrounding unit inspections are designed to detect those smoking guns, those true problems. So as we start to get to the true, the testimonials and the different programs, I want to first touch on no prep, just as a refresher from what Jeff talked about. As you know, is we believe that preparation actually makes the problem harder to eliminate. Basically, when a resident prepares, it disturbs the infestation, it disperses them throughout the apartment. We want, well, our philosophy is we want the apartment to be exactly the way it is before the pest control provider even went out there. We look at treating bed bugs as if it were a crime scene, meaning we don't want the resident to touch anything. The investig when a crime scene happens, the police are the first ones to get there. Then they don't touch anything. If it's a homicide, they wait for the investigators so they can tell the story. I want bed bugs to be the same way. I want the investigators to be the bed bug technicians because they're the experts in the situation. If the resident starts to prepare an environment, they disturbed the bed bug habit, the bed bug living habitat, I call it. And next thing you know, they start to scatter them around. I want the environment to be exactly the way it is and don't disperse bugs throughout the apartment or even push them into the surrounding units. And like I said, it we believe when they prepare, it causes more harm than good. It disrupts the infestation and alters the condition that goes back to that crime scene mentality and it promotes dispersal. And lastly is from doing a lot of being involved with a lot of apartment buildings and a lot of property management companies is you give this laundry list of preparations to a resident. What's the chance of them doing that, the laundry list of preparations hundred percent, right? It's slim to none. A lot of times the residents do about half the prep sheet or they don't do any of the prep sheet at all. And it becomes a complete headache having to chase them down, making sure they do this, this, and this. And when researchers came out that, None of that's necessary. All the preparations they're doing actually cause more harm than good. And what's the definition of insanity? It's asking a person to do the same thing over and over and over again and achieving the same results. 
And that's what the bed bug prep sheet is, is having the asking the resident to do these laundry list of things. And very rarely are they done and very rarely are they done properly. And a lot of times it just makes the problem harder to eliminate from the pest control side of things. So make decisions based on obviously the extent of the infestation. If you're dealing with an extremely high level infestation, you may have them do certain recommendations, but if it's a low or even a moderate level infestation, you can, the resident really doesn't have to do much of anything at all. And you're, the pest control provider is still able to eliminate that issue. Um, and like I said, apartments are different compared to single family. You guys know that you guys are managers of these buildings is you're dealing with all different lifestyles, all different living conditions. You're dealing with surrounding units. You're dealing with those common areas and you want to make sure to do it, be as aggressive as possible, but also you don't want them to prepare because it just disturbs them or it disturbs them. And then if they start to prepare and one of the preparations is uh, remove the linens and then you notice a tear in the bed. Next thing you know, they're taking the, the bed to the dumpster, dragging it through the hallways and we call a person like that that has bed bugs, Johnny Bedbug Seed, because they're dropping bed bugs throughout the apartment complex. So leave everything as is, and then let the experts come in and make specific recommendations based on what the environment tells them. And I always say it's treating bed bugs as if it were a crime scene. We want the investigators to come out to assess the situation and make specific instructions, if any are needed, in order to achieve the results. And once again, uh, research has been done by Rutgers University is they actually treated 114 units and they were eight with zero involvement from the residents. They didn't have the residents pick up a finger, nothing at all. And they were able to eliminate 95% of those 114 units. So it's just, it's just research that was needed in order to show that the no prep philosophy definitely does work. Because we were out there just talking about it since 2010 and we were just talking about it from our experiences in the pest control industry. Well, now research is backing how effective no prep is. And let's be honest, as property managers on the call, as you know how much of a headache some of the preparations can be. Well, imagine if you didn't have to worry about asking the resident to do those things. It makes your life a little bit easier. So that's where I wanted to give you a quick refresher on that because when I talk about the community-wide model, I, all the community-wide model is, it is an inspection model, but also a treatment model. And all the treatment model is once they find a the unit, they use the no prep philosophy. And that's kind of why I wanted to give a quick slide, three slide refresher on the topic. So what's community wide is it's creating a program for a large complex, an inspection program, but also a treatment program. And where we implemented this to make sure that it was effective over a six year period was in Newark, New Jersey. It was an affordable housing community. It was two, sto it was two five story buildings at 360 apartments with chronic and severe bed bug infestations. They were averaging about $150,000 $50, per year to treat bed bugs. So it was more of a reactive model. They, weren't, they were treating bed bugs when residents were reporting the issue. And as we said, is you can't count on the residents to report an issue because the research that I talked about earlier, you're looking at 26% are only reporting the issue. So that's where it was done. And keep in mind, $150,000 per year to treat bed bugs. What did the protocol look like? Basically, they, in, they did complex-wide annual inspection. So every single year, they were doing an inspection of the entire building, every single apartment. They were initially, they would install interception devices and install them underneath every single bed and couch leg throughout the entire environment. Follow up 14 days later. Obviously, the units that had issues in the devices, they were scheduled for treatment. If there were no activity in the interceptors, there was also a visual inspection done as well. So it actually ended on two folds, where you were counting on the inter interception devices, but also you were, if they didn't find bugs in the interception devices, they were doing a visual inspection as well. So you're covering on both ends. Um, that was the annual inspection. That was the inspection process and obviously treating the problems as they ran into them. The treatment protocol was no prep, interceptors, vacuum live bed bugs, steam and case, targeted pesticide application, and two week follow ups until the problem was resolved. So it was extent, it was a very extensive program. And the upfront cost was a tough pill to swallow from the property management perspective. But when we talk about the results over a six year period, the long term benefits outweigh the upfront cost, which we're going to talk about. 
But on top of the other components were a new resident move-in program. So whenever anybody moved in, they inspected high-risk items. They had the pest control company inspect the couches, the beds, areas like that when they were coming off the moving truck. And obviously address it as best as you can. And if they find bed bugs, schedule a treatment for that unit as well. One of the most important things that I think if there's a couple things you take away is tomorrow creating a resident move out program is once residents move out, if they had bed bugs, vacant unit bed bug treatments are very difficult to eliminate. So a lot of times property management companies have a 30 day move out where they have to give notifications that they're moving out with within 30 days, 60 days, whatever it is. The day they give notification that they're moving out, I strongly suggest scheduling either the pest control provider or your maintenance staff to go out there and do a visual inspection the day they give notification they're moving out in 30 days. The reason for that is if you find evidence of bed bugs, you have a 30 day window to get rid of that problem before that apartment becomes vacant. And like I said, vacant unit treatments are very difficult. They're very hard to eliminate. So you want to make sure to treat that unit as bet while they're still there because of the effectiveness. And I think, I'd argue that this is probably the most important point of the presentation. And if you were to establish anything newly within your program is creating a resident move out program to make sure you prevent infested vacant units. So what were the results? I'm sitting here telling you about the program. What were the actual results? So in 2011, this property had 72 units that had bed bugs over the year. Fast forward six years, in 2017, they only had 12 units. Oh, and six years before, they had 72. Think about if that's $1,000 per treatment. They were spending $72,000. Now they're only spending $12,000. So it's one of those things where it's the upfront cost that long-term benefits outweighs the upfront cost because of the amount of money they were saving over the years. And that's really the take home of a program like this. And I always say this is an aggressive program. And it may not fit right for every property, but if it's if you have a property that you just can't get a grasp of, it may be smart to go this direction because it addresses the $125,000, $150,000 a year bed bug issues. And then look at the annual costs over time. Is they were spending $185,000 in 2011. Fast forward 2017, they're only spending $26,000. So it once again stresses the point the upfront cost, the long-term benefits outweighs the upfront cost because look how much money they're saving over that time span. And yes, the first year is going to be expensive. The second year is going to, you're probably going to, it's going to be a little bit less expensive, but once you start getting those subsequent years, the, the price, the budget will drastically drop. The amount of money you're spending will drastically drop because of the aggressive program you have in place. So there was the building wide model. I'm also, what I will do is I will send this to Erica and she will send it out to you as well. We have an affordable housing resource guide that has all that information that I just went over in it. But another success story was a company that I work with out in Northeastern Pennsylvania. Same kind of idea is they have a hundred unit, a hundred unit apartment building that has had a severe problem since 2008. What they did is all treatment was no prep bed bug protocol. They installed standalone bed bug monitors in every single apartment. And what they did is they set up a program where they inspect every single apartment every six months. And then what they did is they, I think they did two floors a month where they did second, second week of the month, they did one floor, fourth week of the month, they did another floor. So they'd cycle through all the units every six months, obviously to detect early, early problems. Residents don't need to do anything prior to the inspection. They were doing move out, move in inspections. Maintenance team inspected monitors whenever they were in the units fixing whatever they were doing. Residents were reporting problems more often once they started this program because they were aware of the things they were doing. And what were the results? In 2017, they had over 60 infested units. They aggressively did that inspection program. And look at the numbers crash. 2018 were five infested units. 2019 was a little bit higher, which was eight. And look at 2020. As of September 30th, they've had only one infested unit. So it once again goes, goes back to creating a program that saves you money in the long run and making sure to catch problems early. So that's basically where I'm going to finish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now hand it off to Mr. AJ Trelevin and he will talk to, talk to you a little bit about success stories as well. 
All right. Thank you. I like that no up versus now up. I'm sure I'm going to get teased for that. So uh, thank you very much, Danny. Um, every time for the last decade I've listened to you talk, I still come away with something new or a couple notes I need to write down and think about. So um, one thing that's really so fascinating and important about this specific uh, pest is how much it changes or at least how much our research is changing and how much that impacts how we need to go about treating it. So uh, really appreciate that. I'm gonna talk about a success story that was given to us by one of our clients, uh, kind of unpack it and tie it back to a lot of the things that Danny was talking about throughout his presentation. Uh, so I'll read this, uh, but this is from a portfolio manager uh, in one of our larger metro markets. Um, and just says, our designated spray tech is knowledgeable in the treatments that are served by our, to our residents. They're able to inform our residents of the products that are used at the same time making them feel at ease about the process. After treatments, we can visibly see the pest activity decrease. Our tech is very proactive and is always on time for their appointments. They prep everything and give detailed instructions on what to do on or before the next scheduled visit. Treatment for bed bugs is fast, effective, and truly works. And so I'm gonna go ahead and unpack a couple parts of those in relation to what uh, Danny described earlier on in the presentation. And, and so really we're gonna focus on the field benefits, right? The benefits when we're in the unit, out there um, in your properties of no prep protocols. So one of the biggest things that, that has been a change for us is we used to see almost one a day we'd have a cancellation when we show up they hadn't done their preparations. We were not able to do the treatment the way we had it set up and we had to reschedule. Since implementing no prep bed bug protocols, cancellations have pretty much become a thing of the past, right? Because there is no reason to cancel other than maybe we have an access issue, but really it, it's gone away. And a huge part of that is when it comes to bed bugs, you need to follow up. It's not a one service type of pest. And if we have missed services, you know, whether it's the first or the second or the third, a missed service could give an entire breeding cycle to a bed bug um, in between when we're there to treat, when we're there to take care of something. Um, it gives dust time to collect in those pitfall traps. All of these things will exacerbate a problem and make it extend into a longer period versus a uh, quick time to resolution. So that it, it may sound like more of a logistical aspect of uh, reducing cancellations, but really what it is, is it helps us get control much, much faster. Um, easy to follow instructions between treatments. Um, and so yes, it's no prep, uh, but often we will leave behind a small checklist uh, for the residents to do in between services, whether that's you know, launder the laundry that we've bagged up in nice bags with you know, picture infographics on what to do, um, or maybe just general housekeeping and cleaning uh, to make it easier, but again, very minimal instructions after the first treatment to get ready for the next one. And those are just um, to really help multiply our effects and our impacts. And I'll also say the no prep protocols make it much easier for our technicians to explain to the resident what is going on. Um, much of it's visual, much of it people can understand and involves things like vacuums and steamers and encasements. Uh, it's not necessarily pesticide that dries invisible and you don't even know what's happened. They are visual things that have an impact right away. Uh, and leading into that, that immediate reduction of visible pests. So when we're talking about bed bugs or really any pest, one of the best control methods is to remove them from the environment. And so if we have an infestation, whether it's low, moderate, high, if we're able to use vacuums and steamers, um, you know, even we use uh, sticky lint rollers, all these different tools to physically remove bugs from the environment. We talk about that in terms of removing kind of that breeding reservoir. Every bug you remove is one more bug that can't mate or breed in between treatment cycles. And so removing that population, bringing it down, not only does it let us count and understand the size of the population, it lets us remove the majority of that, um, which from a psychological perspective, is extremely important to the residents that may be having this treatment done. Um, and when we talk about, again, removing pests, uh, easy to follow instructions, all of these things lead to the ultimate goal, which is the quickest possible time to resolution. Now there are biological measures, there are housekeeping and, and sanitary measures, all these that have to happen 
um, for that time, the clock to move forward. But we are, with partnership, able to very quickly resolve most issues, uh, especially in that low to moderate range, without a lot of extra work by uh, the resident or the property management. Um, and now we're going to also talk about those monitors, those pitfall traps. Um, and when I say lures, I'm talking about the volcanoes that have that that active um, pheromone mimic to have uh, to aggregate bed bugs. And again, those are they're very useful everywhere, right? And and Danny talked about common areas, um, waiting rooms in the units. Um, again. The lure specifically, the active traps, active pitfall traps in vacant units. So if someone did move out, again, the food source is gone. You're most likely to see dispersal of bed bugs. And so even if you have not yet implemented your move out plan, or maybe your, your uh, facility doesn't have one for whatever reason, as soon as that unit is vacant, getting those lures in there to at least identify, and then most importantly, isolate those problems before they become bigger issues within a uh, within a uh, apartment building. Um, we have seen this happen time and again, where monitors have actually prevented infestations. Uh, from a from a low level standpoint, you know, people travel, uh, they go visit friends, they may bring back a bed bug or a couple bed bugs. And if you have these monitors, whether active or passive, you are much more likely to catch the few that are there and stop an infestation before it ever happens, right? So, um, I mean, I'll even, I travel for work and I've sat down at my desk, set my briefcase after flying and seen a bed bug crawl off it. It got thrown up with everyone else's stuff in the overhead bin, someone had bed bugs, and guess what? I brought one with me, but I had one bed bug. You squish the bed bug, you trap the bed bug, end of story, right? And so understanding those very low levels and stopping the infestations before they have a chance to kick off. Um, again, they also greatly reduce that breeding reservoir, that reproductive rate, because the fewer bed bugs that are around to reproduce means the fewer bed bugs that multiply, and we, we really uh, flatten out the curve, uh, something many of us are much more familiar with lately. Uh, and then also it increases the speed with which infestations can be found. So if you have monitors out there, and you have people that both residents that understand what they're for, maintenance staff that understand where to look. Um, perhaps you might have caseworkers or housekeeping or any of those kind of people. If you can train everyone to just understand what this is, why it's there and what to peek in and see if there's a problem, uh, we can spot infestations much, much faster before it's you. With bed bugs, we often have that gradually then suddenly effect. You gradually get more and more bed bugs until suddenly it's a full-blown infestation and they're crawling under the door into the hallway. And that's when we find out there's a, ma a massive problem. And again, I'll bring it back for our residents, for our property managers. I know the most important thing is that time to resolution. So once a problem is found, how quickly can we get rid of the bed bugs? And monitors are a massive, massive help in reducing that population so that control can be achieved as quickly as possible. Uh, and so that's kind of how, from a field standpoint, we see things laying out. Um, we are very excited about some of the things Danny's talked about in terms of using both the blackouts and the volcanoes, those two types of pitfall traps for large scale community wide inspection and monitoring. Uh, we're seeing great results as we've started to roll some of that out in conjunction with our canine inspections. Um, it's a great way to kind of uh, stack the effects and understand where a problem is and start inspecting, doing those vacant or doing those um, adjacent unit inspections. I can't tell you how many times we've had a problem. It's a low level, you know, a couple bugs, and we do the side to side across the hall. Okay, well, now we find them in this unit. Now we go again side to side across the hall, and you just start marching down a floor, a hallway, until we go walk into one and you say, oh my gosh, okay, <laughs> now we know where the root cause is. Now we know how to solve the problem. Because otherwise, if we just go in the one, we'll just keep catching three or four bugs over and over again as they go through wall voids, they go up and down stack plumbing, looking as the population grows for more blood meals. Uh, and so that's really the experience that we've had from the field. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back over to Ross here.
uh, for our Q&A section. I know there's a few that have already been popped in. Uh, and I just want to thank everyone for your time. Thanks, AJ. I appreciate you going through that. So uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's start here with one of the, I'm going to throw something to Danny here. Um, Danny, how often should we be doing inspections outside of known in, uh, infestations? So and how, how often should we inspect places that maybe historically have had issues but don't have issues anymore? You're on mute, Danny. That's a great question. I was looking at that earlier and I thought to myself, it's like, it all depends on what kind of residents you're dealing with. If you have chronic, if you have chronic residents that continue to have an issue, obviously I'd want to inspect those units more regularly. Maybe it's once every two weeks, maybe it's once every month. As for the residents that don't, that have never had an issue, I still want to get in those units. And I would say for residents that don't have an issue and never had an issue, maybe quarterly, but those problem units, you definitely want to go out at least at a month on a monthly basis and if not more frequently than that and that's my honest opinion when it comes to how often you want to do inspections well there's another one in there about inspections too how long or after treatment would you inspect basically i would take the i would take the percentages where if you have a treatment you install all interception devices say you want to install the under the bed interceptors they detect 95 percent within two weeks so after it's eradicated it doesn't hurt to go out maybe two weeks later to inspect the monitors and do a visual inspection and so i think a two-week window is a good a good time frame to see if there's still a, in fact an issue going on okay so there was a question there from agile Pex, pest experts um that said so they were i think it was related to the traps the pitfall traps etc so uh, why do the bed bugs go down to the trap instead of up to the food source? Um, I, I think that maybe there's a misunderstanding about how the traps work and where the bugs are. So basically, it probably goes back to the slide when I was talking about it intercepts bugs as they come to the bed to feed, which makes sense. But at the same, I also mentioned if the bed bugs are leaving the bed, going down the bed, like and getting in that inner well, why they're leaving the bed, no one knows. But that's how bed bugs disperse. They're leaving the bed because they want to go to a hard to address area, another bedroom. Why they're leaving, who knows? But research has shown they're actually, they orient to vertical surfaces. So you're, you're, exa you're exactly right with what you said. It's basically they want to go up, but for whatever reason, some bed bugs want to leave the bed, but we don't know why that is. And that's basically why they, they would rather go up than down, but they do go down as well. Thanks, Danny. AJ, how have you worked with residents uh, who continue to bring bed bugs back to, uh, you know, the building, the, the multifamily housing environment? How has your team worked uh, through that? That is one of the most challenging parts uh, when we're talking about multifamily housing and bed bugs. Uh, I think one of the most, I mean, the most important thing is that collaboration between the residents and the property management and us as the press management professional, right? Um, and and finding out, you know, we had, we've had them before where they keep bringing them back, they keep bringing them back, we're trying to figure out why. One of the things that's important is to understand what habits they have before the treatment. And so um, even though it says no prep, some people decide that they wanna take a bunch of their stuff and go put it in their car before treatment for whatever reason, right? And so all of a sudden you show up 10 minutes early or property management or maintenance is kind of knows the treatment's coming and so they kind of watch you'll see people carrying bags of clothes or something that they consider you know to be a, a very valuable item to them and sticking it in their car taking it with them when they go and then walking back into the unit with that infested item after we finished our treatment um, cars so if we have anyone that may uh, or may not sleep in their car from time to time or spend a lot of time in their car um, those can get infested and then every time they come in and out we've got reintroduction so just understanding the larger dynamic picture um, and working with property management to understand that and see how we might be able to help uh, with any of those items um, and, and then again just talking about who's visiting you know making sure there might be rules about that don't we've had people bringing in you know used furniture in between treatments um, and again, coming back to those idea of if there's a really solid um, barrier treatments, dust, some of the parts of the protocol, as well as the pitfall traps, we can help to kind of isolate some of that, but it will be a much longer process because there's a second reservoir somewhere that they're reintroducing over and over again. 
And I'm, I can, I'm gonna piggyback on that as well as when you have a resident that is a chronic bed bug repeat offender is also trending who they're friends with and adding those units to the inspection protocol while you're doing it. Because a lot of times the property managers know who, who visits what apartments and almost trending, taking a map and trending the apartments they visit and putting that on an inspection protocol. Because when you're dealing with the repeat offenders, they're more likely spreading the problem around throughout the community. So almost do some trending on your own to see where they go and adding those units on the inspection program as well. Thanks, Danny. Thanks, AJ. So Danny, Tim says, uh, we recently started uh, with steaming in our treatments. How would you treat with steam work uh, with no prep? Basically, steam, where steam comes into play with the no prep model is, I'll start with, I have to talk about vacuum cleaners in order to build the whole steam approach. So vacuum cleaners are used in the program to vacuum up the large aggregates of bed bugs. So you say you run into a cluster of bed bugs, you run a vacuum cleaner over that spot. And the one shortcoming with the vacuum cleaner is it leaves eggs behind because eggs are glued to the surface. And if you run a vacuum cleaner over a cluster of eggs, you can't suck those from the surface. And that's where steam comes into play. We use steam in a no prep protocol to address the eggs because we know the extreme hot temperatures coming out of the steam head will 100% kill the eggs. And that's where steam comes into play in a no prep philosophy. And we're not steaming whole environments. We're really just spot steaming where we find the large aggregates of bugs we're vacuuming up those bugs and we're steaming over that spot. So we're using the signs to tell us where to steam, whether it's spotting, whether it's live bugs, whatever it is, but we're not steaming whole environments. That makes sense. And then does IGR work? Do you add it to your treatments or do you recommend adding it to your treatments, Danny? So basically IGRs, they affect the hormones in a bug. So when they're un once they hatch, they're unable to reproduce and grow. So over time, it will address the population. The issue with it is, is as you can say, I've talked about research through the entire presentation. So does Jeff. We're, heavily re we we're all about research and following different research studies. And a lot of the research coming out shows that IGRs may not be as effective as they once thought with bed bugs. So like I said, that's what they're designed to do, but the effectiveness on bed bugs is a little bit in question right now. Okay. Awesome. Well, Danny, AJ, thank you for putting this together today. Thanks for uh, leading us through this training and leading, leading us through the examples. Uh, and the science is proving that this is the most effective way that we can control bed bugs. And I love being able to share this with the world. Thanks for putting this together for everybody. Our pleasure. And all of those, uh, all of you who joined us out there, um, thank you for being part of this. Thank you for supporting us during this time. And if there's anything we can do for you, of course, you know how to reach out. Stay safe, everybody.